When a group of people were exploring a cave filled with snakes and spiders, a disaster struck. They were left helpless, unable to do anything but accept death. And this is their horrifying story. In 2007, Helena Carroll and her fiancé John Cullen decided to take the trip of a lifetime. Little did they know, it was going to be the one big mistake that changes their lives forever. At the time, Helena was 21 years old while John was 24 being a bit older. They both were from Solihull, West Midlands, England. The two knew each other since primary school and were always close with each other. Later in their lives, they became a lovely couple and had been together for four years. Nonetheless, as adults, they had a busy lifestyle with work. But John had just lost his father about a year ago, so he was supposed to take over the family business. However, he was not ready. He felt that he wanted to see more of the world before settling down. Similarly, Helena who was also working in an administrative role at a company wanted the same, to make some great memories. So both decided to go on a hiatus from their careers and travel the world. The two had been saving up money to either make a down payment on a house or go on a grand vacation. As you already know, they chose to travel around the globe. So for starters, they booked a year-long trip. Their plan was to visit Thailand where they will spend several months before moving on to Australia and Japan respectively. So in no time, they were in Thailand having the time of their lives. There they were visiting various places and attractions, but when the couple had been working at an elephant sanctuary near Pattaya on Thailand's eastern gulf, they ran into a friend who happened to have just finished a cave tour in the southern province of Surat Thani. When this friend talked about his thrilling experience exploring the cave, it sounded too good to miss. So Helena and John also booked a tour for themselves. The cave is called the Nam Talu Cave, located in Khao Sok National Park in southern Thailand. This national park, which Nam Talu Cave is located in, is a remarkable nature reserve with tower-like limestone hills, a lake, waterfalls, rivers, caves, you name it, it is a paradise. Being heavily forested, the whole jungle is dominated by tigers, king cobras, exotic birds and many more different and rare species. But despite all that, Nam Talu Cave is always one of the go-to attractions in Khao Sok National Park. It is 750 meters long and the domain to all kinds of cave animals. Cave animals? What do you mean cave animals, you might ask? Well, you see, the cave is infested with bats, scorpions, spiders and a bunch of other species. Yeah, the creepy ones. However, they have never been harmful to visitors. So as long as you won't panic seeing them, you'll be alright. Though still, some part of this cave system can be extremely dangerous as inside the cave passage it is scarily dark and that there are no rope walkways to guide people from the entrance to the exit. But with the tour guide and proper safety precautions, you could have such a safe, unique and exhilarating experience. So Helen and John were all for it. Nevertheless, when they tried to book their tour, it was monsoon season, not the best time to go cave exploring. You see, monsoon means rainy season and it lasts until end of September. So being inside a cave that spreads out its passage into the ground is the last thing you should do in this time of the year as there can be sudden and devastating floods caused by heavy rain. In fact, police had put up signs in Kausok Park warning people to not explore the Nam Talu cave during the rainy season. But despite all that, on 14th of October, Helen and John arrived at the national park to embark on their tour. There, several other tourists also had come to join them. Among them were a German boy, a Swiss couple and their two teenage daughters. The German boy was about 10 years old and he had come with his mom. However, she is not coming on the tour with him as she had unexpectedly gotten sick. So that was the group for the tour. So accompanied by this group, Helena and John went on and approached a guide to take them to the cave but instead they were faced with bad news. The guide refused to take them on the tour. He explained the hazardous and unpredictable weather condition and how no one should enter Nam Talu cave at the moment as it could get completely flooded. Only once the monsoon is over, they start the tours again. 
That is when the passages are either completely or moderately dry. Oh, also not to mention the waterfall nearby the cave's entrance. It increases the risk even more as it could easily swell up and cause flooding. So being inside the cave right now is just suicidal. He said, your lives will be in danger, so just don't go. But well, the group unfortunately did not listen to him. Ignoring all the warnings, they went ahead and found not one, but two locals who were unexpectedly willing to take them on the tour for some money. Now, it is crucial to know that these two men were not professionals. They were just two villagers. In fact, they didn't even have any knowledge or training or equipment whatsoever to do the job. But still, despite these red flags, the group insisted on going. Though I must mention, Helena was hesitant knowing the dangers of floods inside the cave. She had a long-standing fear of drowning and a general dislike of water. So she was already out of her comfort zone. You will take me back to the beach tomorrow, right? She asked John and he said yeah for sure. And with that, the group accompanied by the two locals took a two hour long boat trip on Cholon Lake to a village. From there onwards, they had to trek for another two hours through the thick jungle in order to get to the mouth of the cave. Helena thought to herself, this isn't really me, why am I doing this? Knowing on top of the floods, there will be a lot of bats and spiders that she was clearly scared of. But either way, finally, after a long journey, the group arrived at the cave's mouth. It looked gloomy and ominous as you would expect. Near its entrance, there were huge honeycombs located high up on a limestone cliff. But inside the cave's mouth, there appeared to be shallow water about half a meter, basically like a little river flowing through the passages. So the group without wasting a single more second gradually and nervously entered the cave and descended into the chasm. Inside it was utterly dark and doomy, so the guides handed out torches to everyone to light their way. The tunnel looked quite wide and the cave ceiling was pretty high up, but bats were hanging all over from it. There didn't seem to be any tight or narrow spots, at least um, not yet. So a few seconds into the journey, there they were. The cave creatures, spiders, bats, scorpions, frogs, toads, cave catfishes, crickets and even snakes. When Helena pointed her light over the cave wall, she saw spiders, probably hundreds or even more, scampering on the rocks and walls. For the first couple of minutes, everybody looked horrified but the environment inside looked just gorgeous. The uniqueness of it was too distracting. So not long went by. Everybody seemed to be having a good time despite the creeps they got from the animals. So Helena was a bit relieved and not as worried anymore. They had been exploring for some time by this point. More precisely, it had been about 20 minutes. So far so good. But for some reason, the water level in the cave has increased a little since the time they entered the cave. At first, everybody panicked a bit but then thought, no, it's probably nothing too concerning. So they kept going. But no one knew what was really coming. You see, outside it had been raining for a while, which can explain why the water level is slowly raising. Now you might know where I'm going with this but yeah, a minute or two passed. Helena heard something really, really loud. I mean a massive and petrifying roar. Not just Helena, but everybody else also heard it. It came from the direction of the cave's mouth. Now that was the sound of a disaster striking. Only seconds after that, they saw a huge and raging wave of water coming towards them from the direction of the cave's mouth. Every single one of them realized it was no joke. They have made a terrible mistake, ignoring everyone's warnings. It was a flash flood. Now it's important to know that all this is happening fast within a matter of seconds. No one even had time to process the horrors right in front of their eyes, let alone react and do something like finding and getting on a high ground. Though Helena and John got lucky and kind of spontaneously started climbing the cave wall right before the wave hit them. The water was rising and rising. It was too fast to keep up and they were getting pushed up. But as they were climbing, they saw the two guides and the 10 year old boy being dragged away by the flood. Then the Swiss couple and their two daughters. 
They had no escape and got washed away in the strong torrent. Helena thought, one minute I was in what I thought was the most beautiful place in the world and then the next, death is all around me. As she was trying to process the terror she is seeing, she lost her grip and slipped down but luckily John grabbed her and pulled her up. Then without stopping for even a second, the two kept climbing higher and higher until they found a ledge where they managed to sit on. You see, as I said earlier, the cave tunnel is wide. So climbing its walls wasn't that difficult as it had little ledges and variously shaped rocks all over. So now that they are on a ledge large and high enough to sit on, they had some time until the increasing water level reaches them. The water level that was once only half a meter is now 10 meters. They were all alone in the dark. A minute ago there were 7 more people with them, but now it's just only 2 of them. They could not see anything in the darkness. They had lost their torches while climbing. So as the two were processing what just happened, they started feeling more and more hopeless. They remorsefully recalled their irrational decision to come on this tour and that how easily they could have avoided all this. A couple hours passed in complete darkness. They got bitten by all kinds of insects and the water level was still rising little by little. They went over their options and their next move, except they had none. At this point, it was really, really frustrating to them. No one seemed to be coming to their aid. No matter how loud they scream or call out for help, no one would hear a thing. The sound of the current was too loud anyway. Helena thought they should wait at all cost for as long as they have to until help arrives. Whereas John thought waiting will only delay their deaths and that he must do something to raise alarm and get help. Helena insisted that they must stay as they were at least safe there on the ledge. But John was dead set on doing something as quickly as possible. He knew waiting means dying eventually. Then John came to a decision. It was something unthinkable and reckless. He said he would get into the current and flow with it until it brings him somewhere. He believed that somewhere being an exit out of the cave and then he can ultimately alert the authorities to rescue Helena. But Helena on the other hand was completely against John doing something so stupidly dangerous. Even so, John was highly confident against all the odds. So he slowly climbed down and slipped into the water. Then after a few painful seconds of looking at Helena as she was crying, he let go as he was holding onto a little rock on the wall. It didn't even take a second for him to disappear. And that is the last Helena saw of John. He was just gone. Before him letting go, his last words to Helena were, I love you. And that's all. Now, when Helena experienced this nightmare of her fiancé just doing the most suicidal thing, it shook her to her very core. She had never felt more pain and sadness ever in her life. So now, alone and shivering in darkness, yet she kept clicking to the ledge. She was frozen in place after witnessing so many deaths. All she could hear now was the rumbling torrent. She lost track of time as an hour or two turned into what felt like an eternity. From time to time, she screamed and shouted, Help! 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 But after seeing zero signs of rescue, even she considered jumping into the water herself. However, as it got even darker, just pitch blackness, the visibility was just zero. So she decided to keep calm and wait a bit longer. Though she was watching one thing carefully throughout the whole time. It was a glow worm. She used its position to determine the water level. She thought, if the water level rises over it, I'm done. That's when I'll drown. So in these terrors, instead of making an irrational move, she waited and waited until she felt absolutely despaired. She asked herself, should I just end it here? It would be much easier to throw myself into the water and get on with it now that John is also gone. Or should I just wait for the water to rise and then die drowning more painfully? Now, while she was having this dilemma in her head, she was shivering in her bikini top, vest and shorts. She struggled to keep warm. At one point, she even started singing. Then she prayed. But after some time, she felt dazed. 
so deep down she was scared of losing consciousness. But eventually, after what felt like days, she heard some shouts from somewhere in the cave. Then she also saw a bright beam of torchlight. She knew it was the rescuers. So she cried out as loud as she could to alert them. I'm here, I'm here. Fortunately, they heard her shouts and rushed out to help her. With this team of rescuers, there was this one man, a local, he has come barefoot carrying only a bamboo cane, yet he was the first one to get to her. Then with broken English, he talked to her and guided her back out of the cave safely. Later they told Helena she was inside the cave, trapped for 16 hours. She could not believe it. Later she was also told the man that found her, whose name she didn't know, was the one who had insisted to keep advancing further into the cave when the other rescuers were giving up thinking whoever was left must probably be dead by now. But all in all, just like that, she was eventually saved. But there was a problem. You see, Helena had believed that John also had made it out because the rescuers also had told her that John is okay and waiting for her at the pier. But once they had got there, he was nowhere to be seen. So Helena asked, where is he? But everyone went silent for several seconds. Then without saying a word, they put her in an ambulance. She asked again, tell me where is he? What is going on? Please tell me. Then they had no choice. They told her, more like dropped it like a bomb. He is dead, they told her. She did not see that coming. It was too much. She thought she was going crazy after hearing that. Now, you might want to blame the rescuers for lying, but the reason why they lied was because of her weak health state. If they had told her the truth, she probably would have gone into shock and something real, real bad could have happened to her. So, she later understood that, that they were only thinking of her well-being, but the nightmare wasn't over yet. Later, Helena was told that many dead bodies were found 8 hours before her discovery. And John's corpse also had been found, washed up at the mouth of the cave along with those of the others. Prior to the tour, everybody had left their passports with the tour company. So when the authorities found the corpses and noticed that one more was still missing, the rescuers had been called in to go inside and rescue the last missing person. Still, Helena had no idea of this, especially that every single one of the group was among the dead bodies. So although she had learned what happened to John, she yet had to learn that she is the only survivor. Though it didn't take too long. When she was taken to the makeshift mortuary, she was asked to identify her fellow group members. There, she saw John's body in a box next to one of the little Swiss girls and everybody else. Yeah, there, she came to an agonizing realization that no one had survived except for herself. It was a traumatizing sight to see. She said, I can't believe I'm the only survivor. I can't believe my John is gone. I want to go home as soon as possible, but I want to make sure that John is taken care of. Helena was strong. So before anything, she got herself together and called her parents and said she was fine. But really, she was not. The terrors, devastation, and abiding sense of guilt that only she survived when everybody else, including the two little girls, the German boy, and the love of her life did not, were too much to handle. On top of that, due to all those hours spent in the cave, she developed a life-threatening Wales disease. So right away she was admitted and treated in the hospital for a whole week. Luckily, she recovered from it quite fast and got her health state back to normal. And that marked the end of the gruesome disaster. Later, police identified all the victims. And here they are. The Swiss family. The German boy. The two local tour guides. And finally, John, Helena's fiancé. The post-mortem examination recorded the cause of death of all the victims as either lack of oxygen, hypoxia, or drowning. Either way, it was a tragedy. Their carelessness and lack of common sense led them to their doom. Today, Helena is a mother of two lovely kids. She said, after that nightmare, she felt the guilt for a long, long time. But eventually, she knew she had to move on and start a new chapter in her life. So now she lives a happy life with her now husband Stuart and their two children. So with that bittersweet ending, we've got to the end of the story. 
What do you guys think about Helena's whole ordeal? Let me know about your thoughts down in the comment section. Alright then, that's all for now. I'll see you in my next video of Night Dangers. And until then, stay safe out there and goodbye.